Hello, my name is John Spangle, and welcome to my YouTube channel. As always, explained, I, I titled it Underground. I was thinking about the underground church in present day China and Iran, and Iran and other places where the body of Christ is expanding with the uh, indwelling of the Holy Ghost, is spreading the, the these last moments we have on earth, the body of Christ. Uh, we're at that church age. I, I titled this Isaiah's vision was a rapture for instructions. Give understanding and then talk about Israel today and, and things like that. Uh, a lot of people don't see this. And I like to show things in scripture where I'm looking at something and I'm studying. And uh, a lot of times you have to humble yourself because I, I'm i just learning. And uh, I don't have the answers for everything. Uh, God's, it's, God's great. I mean, this channel is just expanding. I have a fluctuation of, I'll have... A lot of people come in, a lot of people leave, more people come in. It's, it's just back and forth. And I never thought anybody would even share a video of mine. Now there's many videos that people look at and share to other people. And I'm overwhelmed that, that someone, because uh, the more I study, the more I realize, and I look at others, the little I know. There, there's so much knowledge out there. And just in my life, I, I'm not a very scholarly person. Who I love God so much. I love to study the Word every day. And being the word, and I love making these videos. It's something I started a while back, and it's been increasing more and more. I think I'm probably about the most detailed person, and not holier than that. Uh, this is for God. But I think I've, I've detailed the pre tribulation rapture in many, many ways throughout the last four or five months, almost on a daily basis. So far, I've only skipped one day. I was sick. Uh, I've been sick on and off, but I'm able to make videos. But uh, just, it's just, it's an outpouring. It's just a lot is going on. We're in these last moments. Uh, let me get into about the church age. I make this statement a lot, these few things, and I'm going to say some other things to some people. The church age, the church is not purified by enduring the seven year tribulation. The Jewish people are. That's Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 through 27. The church is purified solely by the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross. John chapter 17, verse 1, 26. The church being earned the gift of grace only and not the Jewish people who face being martyred to be with God unless they endure to the end of the seven year tribulation. That weird noise, that cat out there, that's Patrick's playing with his mouse. He's on the hunt. It's it's not too or too late. It's 935 right now. And he's you can tell by his meow when he's got this toy in his mouth. I don't even remember where I found that toy mouse, but he loves that thing. Except at three or four o'clock in the morning and get woke up to it. He woke me up one day. He climbed on my chest and dropped it right to me on my chest. I was like, oh, thank you, buddy. <laughs> so we love our pets. Um, yes, I just had someone just uh, make a comment uh, today on one of my videos about, uh, but it was a second part video where I was talking about the early church. So uh, if he had looked at all my videos, he'd, he'd have an understanding. But he was saying, I see that you're trying to twist scripture, scriptures for a pre-tribulation rapture and you just don't see it. And so uh, people just don't see it. You, you can't, uh, as they old saying, you lead a horse to water, but can't make him drink. Uh, what I try my best to do is, is to show through God's word, scripture, and it's up to that individual. It's a daily walk. I try, to, I try to stress people, and I try to be uplifting to people on this channel. It's a daily walk we have. So basically, whenever I do videos, it's just from my studies of that day. And where I've been looking at, Jesus stated, Mark chapter 13, verse 32. I love this the most to say. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Jesus Christ himself did not know the day of the seven-year pre-tribulation. I mean, seven-year pre I'm mixing things up. Of the day of the pre-tribulation rapture. He did not know because it followed suit as a, you know, the Father to the, to, uh, the groom that the groom didn't know when his father said, "Be ready." The groom would go to his would make a covenant with the future bride. They drink wine, which uh, represents Jesus at the Last Supper, like I explained in the video, saying where he would drink this no more of the new wine until you're in his father's kingdom. That's a betrothal to when he did that with his apostles. That was a, a betrothal to the body of Christ, and that means a covenant. And so. The groom would go off to his father's house for a year. They would build an add-on area to the house where the groom and the bride will live for a year. Uh, they live with the father-in-law 
and the father-in-law helps take care of them financially, so they're not stressed out. Uh, they're getting to know each other. They take a whole year. I mean, how wonderful that you go through all this, and then you have a whole year together, and then after that, you you know, you work and, and things like that. But uh, they, he would go, and then he would, uh, at the time the father says, go get your bride, he would come for his bride. They know it would be up to you, could be up to a year. Uh, you have a deadline, could be up to a year, but no more. So be it less. And so, uh, and I always put that out. I did that last video. I was like, I was thinking about things because I was looking at, uh, I believe Israel's in a Psalm 83 war. A lot of people don't, are saying it, not yet. I believe they are. It started 7 October 2023. And that gives us the season. And you look at, uh, you know, I was looking at harvest season. I was looking at January, February, uh, then time harvest season of the year for Israel. Then I was looking into uh, uh, May of this year as for the, you have the harvest. I'm at the winter harvest and you have that. Then the time of rest. So we're like in that time of rest right now for, for a month. That'd be a good time frame for the body of Christ to go up. But we don't know the day or the hour. So I'm not going there on day and hour. I, I believe that's ungodly behavior to do that. Uh, we're just looking at what God shows us. And then I was thinking about, well, if it's a, a year, you look at 7 October. Well, October around October 3rd of this year is the uh, Feast of Trumpets, which represents. I did a video about that last September last year, how it represents the uh, pre-tribulation rapture. That don't mean it's going to happen at that time. It's just a symbolic represents it. Thought that'd be neat if that's about the time we go. We're seeing everything going on right now. We know it has to deal with Gaza and what Israel's dealing with the uh, Rafa and going in and different things like that. And the whole world right now is against Israel, even the United States of America, which was the biggest ally to Israel of all the nations, was the United States. And now we've we've stabbed her in the back. Uh, President, you know, the Biden administration is held off. They say, you know, well, we don't give you the offensive we weapons, you can do offensive. So you can uh, uh, not hurt these people. Like they really care about people. We have open borders. We about keep people coming in. We have drugs coming in. Uh, our government is full of uh, uh, perverts uh, that uh, child trafficking coming in through the through the open borders and stuff. And they know it. Uh, you know, the United States makes Sodom and Gomorrah look like a carnival, a clown show. Uh, we, we have judgment coming on us. And I believe that's going to happen as soon as we go up. I really believe as soon as we go up, death to America. There's many ways, but America is going to be gone. I don't think America is going to make it to the seven-year tribulation. I really don't. Uh, it's going to be desolation here in the United States of America. Well deserved. Because the body of true church will be up. will be gone. Those left behind will deal with what they have to deal with. Because God brings judgment on, on believers and brings Jewish people into obedience. That's what the seven-year tribulation is all about. And before the seven-year tribulation, there's a gap of time. How long that gap is, we don't know. But in scriptures, there's there's a time period right after pre-tribulation rapture and right before the seven-year tribulation. That could be months or years. A lot of people don't talk about that. But there's something there. So uh, I'm going to fix my fear as a thing just popped up. Email supposed to be off on. It's doing it on the video here. Um, so uh, that's what we're looking at. And so uh, I feel how I believe we're going to hear, you know, whenever this situation's over and at a point they say peace and safety is when, when we'll go up. Now, as I say, the Bob administration, doesn't, you know, we won't give you the weapons for offensive, but we'll help you with your, your defensive weapons. Well, that's nothing. And they know that. It's stabbing the back of Israel. A whole hundred uh, percent. So, apologize. My emails generally have the thing slipped where I don't do it on my video, and it keeps popping up here. Anyways, things that mess up here. And so, uh, because the best defense is, I mean, good defense is, you know, offense, you you attack. And they're not, I mean, it's obvious. They don't want them to go in there and take out Hamas. I mean, it's so obvious. Because the United States backs up these terrorists. We made ISIS. We back things up. Uh, Saddam Hussein, we helped put him in power. And then when he started going against what we wanted, we took care of him. Uh, we did a military coup years ago when Carter was president over the, uh, uh, we, we put the Shah of Iran in there and then, then he was uh, taken out with the, the 
or the leader now, because uh, of revolution, we wanted our person in there. We called a coup, caused a military coup, got our person in there, thought we could control Iran, and then we, we lost that. We have a history of a lot of devious and ungodly things, and that's the United States of America. Uh, a lot of people have been misled by the United States. And don't be wrong, I spent 21 years in the military. You know, it, it's a country I live and the country I fought for. But that doesn't mean I, I like the leadership in the country. Never did. So, uh, but we don't know the day or the hour. We just know, being the body of Christ, we sense that we're about to go up. And that's where we're at right now. There are many raptures according to scriptures. I did a video, Complete Rapture Doctrine in Scriptures, to give understanding to people. Uh, people just think there's one rapture, and that's a pre-tribulation rapture. And there's more than one. And I apologize, Patch is out there. He hears my voice and wants to be in here with me, but he'd be knocking stuff over. So uh, he just woke up from a nap, nap, so I know he's honoring. Um, but there's many raptures in scriptures. I'm about to talk about one where people don't look at being a vision, but I believe it's a rapture, and I'll explain why. But I, I wanted to talk about some people. I'm just a simple person uh, making these videos. I sometimes get overwhelmed by uh, some of the other people on there. If I listen to like a Chuck Missler or somebody like that, I'm going to talk about in a minute. The knowledge of that man is just unbelievable. I don't compare it to someone like that. Uh, but I have love for God. That's why I do this. Uh, for example, uh, Mr. Man, I always talk about Mr. Man. He made a comment. I made a video a long time ago. Uh, Complete Rapture Doctrine and Scriptures is a video where it was like, uh, I put in 13 biblical raptures according to scriptures. My most accurate. And I'm satisfied with that video. But for a while, I was looking at things. I did a video a long time ago showing eight biblical raptures and, uh, according to scripture. There's eight that I found. And Mr. Man made a comment about Paul and John. I have forgot about those two. <laughs> so, I mean, Paul was raptured up for the, uh, to write the book of Revelation. So, yeah, so I thanked him. And then later he had asked me a question about something we had a disagreement on. And so I decided instead of just comment, I commented, I'll make a video about that and see. And so what I did was, and I don't even remember what it was about, to be honest with you, but what I did was the next day I went, Went through my studies, but I, I set things aside, had prayer, and I did it from scratch. I wanted to see if I was accurate because I could have been in there. And a lot of times I'll do that uh, to make sure I'm not error or something uh, wrong because I've made mistakes before in the past, and I, I like to not make them again. And so uh, I was doing that, and uh, I made that video, and it was, it was kind of for him. And I remember someone had got after him in a comment about, well, you shouldn't get after John for doing that. And it's like, no, that's not comment. That's, that's good. That's how we learn. Uh, we cannot be dogmatic on everything. I mean, there's certain things I look at. Yes, there's a pre-tribulation rapture. I've got so much information about it. It's there. So, you know, that's not being dogmatic. That's being rightfully dividing the word of God. There's, there, there's a difference there. Uh, so he helped me out. Then I had... Someone who I've been looking at some stuff, really getting to know recently, uh, called The Sneak. He's been sending me some comments, and I've been studying through. I'm looking at stuff about the gap. I was thinking about doing another video. I kind of didn't sway that way, but that's what I was going to at first do for today. But I'm going to do some more. Because uh, I, I threw a couple things about the gap of time between the pre-tribulation rapture and the seven-year tribulation. I wanted to get more in-depth than that to show some more stuff. And we were looking at stuff where he was looking at it in Hosea. About And I just used chapter 4, but I don't remember if chapter 4 was one of those that he had given me or not. I, I'm sorry, my memory, it's been a crazy day. I had to go to the doctor, uh, and I'm thankful, thankful, I wish I wrote that sister's uh, uh, name down. One of the comments, she had prayer for me over some of the health issues I'm having, and I, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, but I had to have a colorization uh, on my stomach ripped and and so they did a chemical causation. I did a couple weeks ago, just a little one. This time it was very thorough and they did the whole thing. So yeah, it's, it's very painful. Um, cause that's just chemically burning away that flesh, you know? So that is what it is. You got to deal with it, right? That's life. So, uh, it's been a bad day and, uh, been upset, uh, cause pain meds stuff. It gives me, I have to be careful with the other medications I'm with and, makes me sick, nauseated, and it's, it's been a rough day today. Uh, 
That's why it's so late and I don't have this video. I'll do more talking than actually this video. I can be done pretty quick, just a few pages. But that's where I'm at. Uh, but but there's a lot there, and I'm, thank, I'm thankful for her prayer so much. Uh, it just comes on my mind. I'm very tired of dealing with things. So the sneak I'm looking at uh, doing uh, more about the, the gap, and he was out showing me some scripture that was sticking out to him about uh, rapture, and I, I agree there. And uh, But I don't remember he was talking about chapter 4 cause, and Hosea because I'm going to use that today in a minute. I just got led that way, so it may have been thinking of him, me and my memory issues. <laughs> So it may be a help from him to help me on that. Uh, Sharpshooter had made a comment, his name was Sharpshooter, about spiritual attacks. And I thank him for, uh, we were talking about, you know, a comment about spiritual attacks and money situations I'm in and health. And uh, I appreciate so much. I get humbled by these people. Now, sometimes I get the comments of people attack, yes, but I've got well over 3,000 comments. And I'm sorry, I can't answer all of them. I find some, they'll find it won't show all where some people went back to previous videos and made comments and I don't see it. I apologize. But I try to hit and miss as best as I can. And, uh, but I, I, I love it, the encouragement I get from people. Uh, but, it, you know, I had someone say, you need to talk to set down the pre-tribulation rapture. Uh, for that, I'm, I'm not going to because this is the time frame I'm in as in what I want to do. And there's so much I could go more into. Like I said, I'm going to go more into death and about the gap time because a lot of people don't show that. And this is what this is about, just to give understanding for people can study on their own. It's not entertaining value. There's nothing entertaining about me. So I'm, I'm trying to do this to uh, instruct people as I'm learning for them to see. Uh, and by all means, I don't have the intellect to do, to really go in death at some people. Uh I did. I do want to say something about Chuck Missler. I was looking at some stuff today, and it confirmed. And a lot of times you'll have people, and then they'll do things, and it's like, I know a lot of people get after me about this, and so. And then when I saw him talk about it uh, the other day, it was either today or you know, when, during my when I was looking at some videos, or yesterday, it was the last two days I have been. I caught this, and I was like, this this is like a um, assurance or understanding. That was, I believe I was you know, correct on this issue. I always talk about Jesus Christ was raptured. And when I use for that is, uh, I use uh, John chapter 20, verse 17. Now Jesus ascended up to heaven. Jesus said unto her, talk to Mary Magdalene. And I always mention that her in my picture behind me uh, my, that Jake picked out in the, in the uh, flea, flea market. And I got that picture. Um uh, Mary Magdalene put an ointment, I'm sorry about my words, on, on Jesus' feet, clean his feet. Uh, Jesus said unto her at the garden, at the tomb, uh, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father and your father and to my God and your God. And of course later he came back down and spent 40 days with them. Well, what he had to do is he had to go up to the ark in heaven and put his blood sacrifice up there. Which in Revelation chapter 11, we, we hear and see the Ark of Testimony. The Ark of Covenant is not the Ark of Covenant no more in heaven. It's the Ark of Testimony because Jesus Christ's testimony, what he did for us. And that, of course, a lot of times I'll talk about Ron White. He had a ministry and, and he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I talk a lot against him because I got interested as a teenager into biblical archaeology and different things like that. And I used to be big on that stuff. And... Uh, I could go back and debunk everything he's done. And it's easily, if you really look at things, but people are easily fooled. But he talked about how when Christ died on the cross, his blood went down underneath a crack underneath the cross, down in the Calvary into the Ark that's hid, the Ark of Covenant uh, here on earth is hidden right there. I don't believe it's hid there. I believe his whole story is a lie. And there's various reasons without scripture that I, I could get in, I could speak over an hour about uh things I looked at and researched about that, but we know that his blood didn't have to go to an earthly ark at all. It had nothing to do with the earthly ark. His blood had to be on the heaven ark, the ark in heaven. That was the, the his blood covenant for us, for our past, future, our pre, uh, past, present, future sins. And so it had to go up there uh, with God. It had nothing to do with this earth, okay? And so this man's done a ministry on that and, and a lot of other things he had found and, and uh, 
the Red Sea crossing, you know, different things. We already knew where that was at, and I can get into that. Uh, but anyway, so uh, when it talks about in uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 9, where it talks about Jesus being taken up, Luke chapter 24, verse 50, 51, it says he's carried up. Mark chapter 16, verse 19, where it says received up. These are our apostle phrases, where Jesus Christ was raptured up at that point. He's talking, giving instructions to his disciples, and he's separated, and he's taken up, carried up, and received up. He didn't willingly go up. It was something that brought him up. And I always talk about Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, where it says, uh, And she brought forth the man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was cut up unto God and to his throne. Uh, many people see that heart puzzle phrase caught up. Jesus Christ represents, uh, uh, you know, the body of Christ, where it's the body of Christ going up to pre-tribulation rapture. I don't see that in that verse. I've always seen that that's about Christ. It describes Christ. He was to rule the nation with a rod of iron. And then her child is talking about Israel, her child being Christ, was caught up into God and to his throne. And so I mentioned it on someone else's webpage who I recommend to go to. That was New News by Ross. Uh, Ross commented back, no, that's about the, uh, uh, and actually he did a video, said it in his next video, that uh, has to do with the uh, pre-tribulation rapture. So I'm not going to argue with my brother, that's just something we disagree on. And I couldn't find anybody else who looked at that and agreed with what I was saying that Jesus Christ was raptured up to and used that verse specifically for that. Now, uh, Chuck Missler has said they, they could be used for two things, which I agree. Some things can be used for shown for things, uh, more than one. I believe that's about Jesus Christ, but you, ask, you also can look at that because he does represent us. And so, because we are his bride, that can represent us going up too. But uh, dual meaning. In some places in Scripture, there is dual meaning. But uh, the reason I mention that is sometimes I want to make sure I'm correct on things. Like I said, I'm simple. I'm not really high intellect, intellect person. And I do these to show, to open myself, open myself. I'm, I'm careful to God because if I err, I'm responsible for what I say to people. But at the same time, we are to take our abilities and do for the kingdom of God. So I don't have a lot of big abilities but I'm still trying my best what I can uh, to be obedient to God and, and get things out and the word out and help people study and be uplifting. Enough on that. Isaiah's vision or rapture. A lot of people say this is a vision. I see this as a rapture. And then I'll go into about Israel. Isaiah chapter 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. This is, you know, Isaiah obviously saying what he saw. High and up, lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. Twain meaning two. Um, and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Now understand, uh, when I talked in a previous video about frankincense, the three gifts given to Jesus Christ, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I'm sorry about my speech. I'm having trouble. I'm tired and I'm hurting. Uh, so I'm having trouble keeping my thoughts together and speaking. Uh, those gifts, gold represents kingdomship. Frankincense uh, was the incense. It represents uh, uh, worship because it was used. It talks here about the incense, the smoke from the incense. I'm sorry. That's what that smoke comes from. There's incense in God, our prayers come up as a smoke. And then myrrh represents death and sorrow. And as I said previously, uh, those are also what the uh, the bride, when he comes for, I mean, when the groom comes for his bride in a Galilean wearing, wedding, if he has enough money, he'll have a crown of gold. But he dresses kingly. Uh, if he doesn't have the money, for, and he's a, not as wealthy man, he'll have a... Uh, a crown made out, a garland made out with flowers, and they're like wreathing put on his head, representing a crown. And he dresses priestly, and on his body, body I'm sorry, my speech, and I apologize. On his body, he'll have, uh, you know, incense of frankincense and myrrh, sweet smelling, uh, because death and sorrow, they they put the myrrh on the dead bodies. That's what that is. When uh, Jesus Christ was buried, they had put a lot of myrrh on his body, and the materials. Uh, uh, to cover the smell. They do that to dead bodies then. That's just why it represents death and sorrow for Christ because he suffered for us. 
but it's also it's 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 sweet smelling and it was used on and so Christ represented the groom, of course. Uh the Last Supper, like I said, when he talks about the wine, we drink some wine, I'll never drink that again till in the new in the Father's house, meaning he's when he comes for us, we're gonna have wine with Christ. So it's it's wonderful to know these things and learn as we go. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King and Lord of hosts. Now this opened my opened my eyes to a lot of things here. Why is he worried that he's a sinful man in front of God if it's a vision? It wouldn't matter unless he's physically in front of him. Because what happens if we go before God, he would die. Remember, Moses wanted to ask to look at God. And God said, hide in the cleft of the rock. And as he walked by he saw his shadow because if he looked on him, it would have killed him. And, and you say, well, Adam walked with God. Well, Adam, he walked with God. He talked with God. And then sin came. So he be, thing, it changed things. Now, did he walk with God after that? I don't believe he did. He couldn't, that, that connection. That's why everybody's fighting over Israel. I'm big about this in Jerusalem. What's so big about the Temple Mount? I believe that's the Garden of Eden. I, I truly believe the Garden of Eden was right there. I know you have the Euphrates and Tigris. I've been to both. I've been in the Euphrates and Tigris. Um, but everybody, what makes you think those two rivers in the location they were at the beginning, the whole world was covered by a flood. It's unbelievable. They act like they're in the same spot. It's incredible things that people do. You have the Tigris, Euphrates, Gihon, and Pison were the four rivers. That flowed out of Eden, at Eden. Now, Eden was, well, Eden was a big area, uh, the garden east of Eden. So if you look at the promised land, what's east of that is Jerusalem. And I believe, I, I've said many times, I, I, I believe, uh, uh, and I've been looking at biblical archaeology. I, I, sorry, my speech. I did that a few videos ago, and actually, and I found two archaeologists that think the same, similar that I do. That Temple Mount area is where, Adam walked with God in, in the cool of the evening. The cross, now I don't know if anybody, the archaeologists, I don't know if they agree with that part. But they do agree that Jerusalem is, they were thinking it being Eden. But the cross, uh, I believe, is the, the tree of the fruit of knowledge. The original sin, God made for our sins right there. And I could be wrong. I just something there. I'm not just, oh, this spiritual thing comes, you know, I'm not like that at all. I'm just a simple man, and, I, and sometimes I get overwhelmed by listening to people and what people uh, give me and read because of the knowledge they have compared to me. But I'm so blessed by having brothers and sisters who, who give me things that uh, I just I just look forward to meeting meeting you in heaven and talking with you. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid upon my mouth and said, Lo, hast thou touched this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also, notice right after that, he hears the command from God. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, I Here I am, send me. And now I'm about to get you into the instructions that was given. So he was not called to step forward to God. Of course, we you know he one step, and he was bowing forward until after his sins were purged. Why did that need to happen? If it was a vision. So that's how I look at things. And and I see that as being a rapture. Other people say, you're a crazy old guy. You see rapture everywhere. Yes, I do. There's many. So, uh, and to give understanding for those people, who are, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew Greek. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, there I go. Speaking too quick. The Old Testament is written in Greek. Old form of Greek. Cone Greek. This is where I have trouble with my memory. The New Testament was written in Greek, Old Cone Greek. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew with a couple areas of Aramaic. We get the word harpazo, means snatching and carried up, carried away or taken away quickly, which we get the Latin word rapturo, rapturo, what we, is where we get the English word rapture. And it's a meaning of a spiritual or physical where you're taken from one location to another. It could be physical or it could be spiritual. Paul didn't know in, uh, I believe it was uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 through 5, he talks about experience of someone he knew 14 years ago, and I believe that's referring to himself. 
At first, I was like, I'm confused. And I did a few videos where I confused. He knows somebody, but I don't know who it is. I want to go back and study more, and I did. And the more I read, and I, I go by chapters. So I read the chapters before and after, including that chapter. And I get the context that Paul was referring to himself, because a lot of times Paul doesn't like to put himself on a pedestal. If you really read some of the stuff he does, he does say some things about, but he, he he's always wants to downplay because he doesn't want that that flesh side. He was always fighting the flesh. He's always concerned about it. I mean, Paul, one of the greatest apostles I believe out there, um, was constantly praying that he wasn't even deceived. So if something we had flesh, we wore the flesh. And so uh but I believe he's referring to himself 14 years before that he was raptured up, but he didn't know if it was a physical or a spiritual. But he was taken up and he explains it in great detail. So uh, I say it was instructions from God as Isaiah chapter 6, 9 through 13. And he said, go and tell his people, hear ye indeed, but understand not and see ye indeed, perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Now, words, they're not going to let them know that you're going to show them stuff, but they're not going to believe you. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted with inhabitation and the houses without man and land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away and there'll be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet it shall be a tenth and it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as no whose substance is then which they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. In other words, they're going to, a lot of things are happening, desolation, it's going to be desert for a while, then they'll come back later, which that took, takes place, place later. Uh, understand that right now we're about to go up because God's going to make it all about Israel. And during this time, all about his people, he's also going to bring judgment and allow judgment on top on top of uh, the unbelieving world. He gives you what you want. You want a life without God? He's going to give you a life without God. One thing we have as believers, I understand no matter how bad it gets here, it's going to get better. Unbelievers, this is how good it gets in your world because you're going to go where it's going to get worse. So we have that blessing from God. Isaiah talks about a future rapture and then wrath. And I might have got this from the sneak. I'm not sure or if it just came on my mind about this. And I apologize. That's just why I'm going to give credit to him if I got this. That's why I talked about I'm going about, about I'm about to talk about Isaiah, Hosea chapter four. I think he had said something about it. I know he's talking about five, so uh I struggle sometimes. It's, it's really been a bad day. Uh, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 16 through 21. Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They have poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of delivery, in, as in pain, and crieth out in her pain, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have as if it were brought for forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the world followed. Thy dead men shall live together with thy dead body. Listen to this part here. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. Shall they arise, awake, and sing, yea, that dwell in dust. For thy dead is as the dew of the herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for the iniquity, Earth shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So I believe this is referring, letting his people know that there's a rapture. And though the dead are going to be raptured up too. And then they're going to go for a little moment. And notice the uh, Lord cometh out of his place. That means out of his heaven, he'll come and do judgment on the earth. And the earth will pay for their sins for an unbelieving world. And I believe that's what that's referring to. I could be wrong, but that's the way I see it. So we look at Israel as a sinful nation. Why? There's many reasons why God, why God is going to deal with, uh, during the seven-year tribulation, Israel only. Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 through 27, explains the whole thing. But there's many places in Scripture that, that leads to that. And Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 through 19, does. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to talk about someone specific, one of the leaders, uh, known leaders in Israel today and the concept of the mind. Uh, yes, there's godly people. Some of the Jewish people, they're the chosen. All right. They talk about God all the time, but they're still idolaters. 
There's a lot involved, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. I hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelt there shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, and the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Sometimes it refers to what's going to happen in the future because of their disobedience. Let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shall not fall in the day, and the prophet as the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy the mother, thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is why a lot of things come on to him, because when they came out of the wilderness way before the Exodus up to present day, they know of God, but they're missing part of the knowledge of God because they, they brought the, the rituals and the paganism uh, from Egypt. So a lot of things... Because there's a Jewish sect that do with mysticism. I, I studied that uh, uh, a long time ago. I want to say the Kabbalt, but I could be wrong on that, uh, my memory. But that's something I looked at a long time ago, the mystic side of some of the Jewish leaders and what they're, they're, they're in. And the people are shocked because as Christians, we're like, well, the Jewish people are the chosen. They're all godly people. Uh, but there's some misleading godly people. You know, I talk a lot about the United States of America. There's a lot of godly people in the United States of America. Are fighting against the dark leaders, but the leadership of this country, America, is all ungodly. There's not a godly person in there. Now, people are going to argue with me and say, Donald Trump, he's a godly man. No, he is not. He's by far not a godly man at all. Well, just something, no. Well, God's, God uses bad and good people. So it's not just, oh, Donald Trump guy. Uh, it's all a game. It's a charade. It's a circus. And, uh, it just you just it's been misled. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowing knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of the God of thy God, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me, therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away thy take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declareth unto them. For spirit of whoredoms have caused them to err and they have gone a whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars. I'm a poplar. Sorry, poplar. Poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore. Your daughter shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. This is talking about not necessarily there are a bunch of prostitutes and stuff. It's meaning uh, spiritually. I will not punish your daughters when you commit whoredom, not your spouses when they commit adultery for themselves are separated with whores. They sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that doth not understand shall fall. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend, and come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Bethaven, or, nor swear the Lord liveth. Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Ephraim was one of the larger tribes. A lot of times when they use references, because it's done many times in the uh, Old Testament about Ephraim, they're meaning as a nation of Israel. Their drink is sour. They have committed whoredom continually. Their rulers with shame do love give ye. The wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed of their sacrifices. So God's going to bring his people back to obedience. That's the whole reason. If you read Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 through 27, that's the whole reason for the seven-year tribulation. I just had someone just uh, made a comment today about, uh, well, church has got to be purified in going through the seven-year tribulation. No, it doesn't. Then I had another person talk about the, the tribulation saints, and it talks about, gave me scripture about the tribulation saints. Yes, those martyred during the seven-year tribulation. And those that endure through the seven tri tribulation come to knowledge uh, of God, uh, who Jesus Christ really is. They're tribulation saints, absolutely. We are not. We are the body of Christ. We are a different set of group of people. It's discernment, people. It's understanding this group for this, this group for that. And the problem with people is there's not enough in the scripture to know that he talks at separate times. 
And sometimes he's talking to two separate, two groups at the same time. Uh, many times when Jesus Christ talked to the apostles, he was talking about the Jewish people, but he was also talking about his kingdom. So it's, it's understanding of both. And what I tell people the most is they won't get it unless they're born again. They cannot. And this is important. I stress this on my videos because uh, to give you understanding when you talk to these people, because uh, sometimes, they, man, I've told this person a thousand times, showed them this and that. Why don't they see it? Because they're not born again. So what you try to do, you try to uh, motivate them, uh, show them the scripture. Hopefully they'll take that bit well, and, and have that yearning because we have a we have a hole in our heart. And we fill it with either with the, the flesh or we fill it with God. That's only two things. That's indwelling. You're their child of God. You're a child of Satan. So we have all been child of Satan. At one time, I was a child of Satan until I became a child of God. And once you become God's child, that's it. Once saved, always saved. A lot of people say argue against that. Well, that's not true. Yes, it is. Uh, that doesn't mean I can't err, but I always go back to the correctness. And that's the Holy Ghost will guide me. If I mess up, I'll go back. There were times as a young soldier, I was overseas for the first time. It's easy to be good when you're home, when you're going to church and stuff. But when you go overseas and you got no church in, in some areas and doing different things, easy to get away. And then that's when the attacks happen. And, and that's when you, you you may be led astray, but you won't stay because you have that foundation given by God. And so you're repentive and God has forgiven you of, of that. So... Uh, we go through a lot in our lives, and we have persecution, tribulation all our lives long. So it, it builds us, and it shows who's true to God. Because, like I said, a lot of people, everything's easy going out. I'm for God. But then when things ha bad happen, do they go to God, or do they start cursing God and going away? Now, believers do that. To get an example of Israel leaders of today, I, I talk about someone who... Uh, a lot of people refer to him. He could be the Antichrist. I don't care about who's the Antichrist. I'm not going to be here for the Antichrist. I don't look for the Antichrist. I, I rarely talk about the Antichrist. It's for those people left behind uh, to give understanding. But it, why? I mean, God gives us everything to give us understanding. We knowledge and we know things. But uh, I don't look for the Antichrist because I'm going to be gone before he's here. And people will argue, well, you're not prepared. I am prepared. Because my faith is with God. And because of my faith, I believe in his promises I'm taken care of. Along with my brothers and sisters here on Christ, we're taken care of. God does not lie. Yuval Noah Harry, Hari is an Israeli author, public intellectual, intellectual, historian, and professor in the Department of History at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Yovel Noah Harari is also the Jewish advisor to Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum, which he stated uh, recently, or well, I don't know how recent it was. In the Bible, God is the creator. His chief power is to create. He creates animals and plants and humans according to his wishes. Now we are gaining the power to create life just like God. And in a way, we even go beyond the biblical God. That says a lot about this man and his character. Uh, he is married to a man, which I don't believe that's that true. Two men can't marry, two women can't marry. But uh, this is not a godly person. All right. And this is an example. I used him as an example of some of the main uh, leaders and groups in Israel. Uh, Israel's God's chosen people. They're going to go through a lot. But don't think their leadership is perfect. OK, um, we tend to look at read the Bible and be a little ignorant of things. Or, oh, it's God. People. So, yes, right now we are to be praying absolutely for for Israel. We are to be back in Israel up 100 uh, percent. That's the reason why I think uh, this is the final straw of the administration of uh, Biden by turning their back and say, as I say, stabbing Israel in the back. That, that's the final straw uh, for our nation. We're well overdue. And the protection uh, of our nation, it's it's gone. It's not there. Now, I think the only thing that's holding us at this moment is the body of Christ, the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Remember, we hold back. We restrain 
the uh, Antichrist, we're, we're keeping it together with our war, prayer warriors and different people doing different things. That's what's keeping it together. We're about to go up. And then we go up, it's going to go real dark. And like I said, that's what I'm thinking about doing tomorrow. Unless I get sidetracked, because I was going to do it today. That's that's what I'm going into tomorrow about the gap, uh, time, the darkness. Talk more about the darkness. This is even before the seven-year tribulation, which even gets worse. It's incredible how bad it's going to be. Uh, but yet during that time, it's going to be the biggest revival on history of the face of the earth. Remember last time we had judgment, only eight people got on the ark. Uh, because everybody had, they were, in, they were not redeemable at that point. They had mixing of DNA. It got so widespread and severe. So we talked about Noah being righteous in his generations. And no, not a single person got on that ark with mixed DNA. Uh, people do things that aggravates me. And when they put out there, well, there's an incursion later, yes, of giants, yes. Uh, but how that came about, I, I, I don't remember how. I did a video about that a long time ago. I need to go back and and maybe, well, I'm not. I'm more about pre tribulation rapture right now. It's where I believe we should be. I should be. But I did a study about that. I kind of explained that. Um, but a lot of people say one of the people, Ham or one of them, uh, they talk a lot about Ham because of the sin he committed. And then it gets into, you have to have knowledge of the culture to understand things. There's a people, out, actually I talked about this, that tried to say that Ham did a sexual thing either with his father or his mother, and that's the reason why he was cursed. That is so far from the truth. That's disgusting. But that is so far from the truth. It, it's simple, yet people don't understand. He went in found his father drunk. You know, the ego system was different. It's not, you know, people are like, well, no, it was a drunker. He got drunk that time because you got to think of the whole world is different. So he made his wine. It's not like you have water, bottled water everywhere. You go in the Middle East, still like that, some areas where you drink things to. I mean, Joseph, seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. How they survived during the seven years of famine? Beer. They took what water they had and with grain, which makes tenfold more. And they had beer. Uh, people get so whole hum on freaking alcohol because throughout the scripture it talks about being sober minded. That's not just for alcohol people. And understand they drink alcohol all the time. They didn't have just wells everywhere and water everywhere for large amounts of people. So they drank a lot of alcohol. Jesus Christ himself drank alcohol. The first miracle he caused was alcohol. And I had a couple here years ago. Visited my house, and, and the, the, the preacher's wife got mad at me. And she got mad at me because she said, well, you know, the, the, and I don't even how we got on subject. She got on subject that uh, that uh, the miracle of the water to one, you know, that was just like grape juice. It wasn't very strong. That's not true. We know what the story tells. That was strong alcohol content. It was the strongest wine, period, for seven days. And she's like, no, yes, because the governor, the, 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 the father of the groom is called the governor. It was a party. It's a seven, you know, seven day feast. Well, they served the strong wine at the beginning. And at the end of the feast, they, they served the weaker watered down wine. And he made a point. He did not know the servants knew what happened, but he didn't know what happened. And he came up and thanked Jesus for bringing in this wine, but couldn't believe how strong it was that he did different than most people do. He served the strongest at the last. So we had a strong alcohol content. And she's like, you're, and she acted like I was ungodly by saying that, by knowing the truth. So that's a problem with people. We, we, we lead by emotions. When they study word of God, they don't have an understanding of the culture, you know, and things of the culture. And that's where they do wrong. As in the story of Ham and his father, he walked in there. Noah didn't know uh, how strong that wine was. Cause like I said, it, Things were different. And so he drank too much. Passed out. He was naked. So he went in there, went out, told his brothers. They walked in respectfully and covered him up. Okay. When, when the father dies, he blesses you through generations. Well, because of what Ham did, he was cursed. Now, a lot of people say of knowing. Uncovering his father naked says, of knowing that he did something sexual to his father. Or did something sexual to his mother. Because then, like, around the Vitigus, the modern... Deuteronomy it talks about knowing of, you know, talks against about incest and things like that. But I don't, I don't see that.
Because just the disrespect of coming and talking to his brothers like that, absolutely. The father woke up, found he was naked and covered, and found out the story of who covered him and who did, and then he cursed him. Through generations. Because that's what you do. He's the patriarch. He goes through and blesses you or not. And that goes through two or three generations. So it's understanding of the culture that uh, things. That's like Lot and his wife. When uh, two angels, uh, the men wanted to have sex with him. And so uh, Lot offered his daughters. And he said, what an ungodly man. What awful. You offer your daughters, tell them they're virgins, and offer them to protect those guys. Well, you got to go by the customs. It was very severe. Someone comes into your house, you're responsible for them. You are to protect them at all costs. Now, that's kind of messed up. They wouldn't have took him. They wouldn't have took his wife, so he offered his daughters. Now, today we would look at that with the Western mindset and say, that's ungodly behavior. But we... We're looking at things with the Western mindset. And I tell many people, it's hard to understand the scripture. To totally understand, you got to be born again. Also, you have to understand the culture. The culture opens up many things to scriptures and understanding of the scripture, but people don't spend the time. You know, they go to a Western culture area. They go to a Western culture church. They're taught by Western culture pastors. And those Western culture pastors, sorry for my speech, have all their life been teaching the Western culture way of the scriptures. And the scriptures have nothing to do with Western culture. It's all Middle Eastern. And it changes the meaning to everything. If you go back and research, there's more scripture in the Bible for drinking alcohol than against it. People don't understand that. It's allowed if you drink moderate. I, I remember one time I, as an infantry sergeant, we had a memorial. And we gave a toast. And we drank a beer. To, uh, and I don't even like the taste of beer, but I, with the men, I drank a beer. It was for more or for our fallen soldiers. We just had some brethren fall. And someone later made a comment to me, really bothered me, you know, well, why do you do such things? You're supposed to be a Christian. You're drinking alcohol. The ignorance of that person really upset me. All right. There's nothing wrong in that idea. You know, that's probably... The only beer I drank in two years, and I hadn't drunk any after for years after that. You know, I don't like that type of thing. I just don't like it myself. So, and I'm not going against someone having one at all. I think it's all right. They just can't overindulge moderation. That's why the Pharisees got after Jesus Christ because he was. If you look back and read, they considered him a partier because he would he loved to fellowship and he would go to these places. But he can go sit sit in a bar and not be sinful. Or I could go in a bar and sit and be sinful. <laughs> Christ is different than me. You know, but what I'm saying is he went to these places and he drank and people, uh, he was not a drunkard, but they, their, their religious beliefs, their man's religion, the Pharisees, they, they were always a lot of pressure against him. They didn't have understanding. So I hope this gives you more understanding of things. And uh, there's more I'll talk about. I'd really like to get into more of that gap and show about the gap of time. Like I said, we don't know how long it is. But it's the chaos that the Antichrist comes out of. I mean, things are chaotic now, but not too bad. At certain areas in the world right now, things are bad. But still, we're like in days of Noah. But it's going to get real bad. And it's going to be chaotic. Uh, 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 this, things are going to be bad. And that's why I want to get into through Scripture to show that. Uh, when I get something or an idea or look at something, I want to do it through the scriptures of God. And the word of God, I mean, I'm meaning to say the scripture, the word of God, to have understanding. So God bless you. Thank you. And I hope this uh, uh, motivates you to study on the word on your own and to uh, have that daily walk with God, because that's what matters. Uh, the daily walk, daily prayer. And so it matters a lot. Thank you and God bless you.